I work with um, Sean Diddy Combs for many years of my career. Mm-hmm. Literally, as soon as you walk in the office, there was a sign, sleep is forbidden. It was brainwashed into our head, like it's brainwashed into so many aspiring entrepreneurs and people who want to get ahead in their life. How much sleep should we be getting on a nightly basis? Sure. I'm going to, I'm going to break that question to three things about Sean's an amazing character. You know, I got an opportunity to, to see him a lot over the years and just a, not even a hard worker, just at another level worker. Mm-hmm. So people, when we talk about sleep, when we, when we say, oh, you don't sleep, you got to crank, you got to crank, you got to crank, you got to crank. Yes, you do have to crank, but you crank during your waking hours. And that's, that's what we really have to think about. If we look at sleep, sleep is the most imperative thing that anybody can do. And I have a, what I call the four pillars of fitness. It goes spiritual, emotional, nutritional, and physical. Physical is the last thing I work on. I work on sleep. Then I work on stresses, what's stressing you in your life, and then I work on nutrition. A lot of programs that I work with, even athletes, we don't start working out for the first month. People are like, what? It's crazy. Because if the other three are out of whack, I can work out all day, but you're going to get injured. So sleep, if we were to say uh, general terms, six to eight hours. Athletes, eight to ten hours or more. And if you look at this, look at look at your look at your cat, or look at look at a, a cheetah. You never see a cheetah go. Oh, I pulled a hamstring trying to chase a gazelle, do you? You never, because they're resting, they're stretching, they're eating, they're resting, they're stretching. And when they're running, that's like an athlete being in the game. They're hunting, they're walking, and then after that, they eat, they sleep, and they rest, and they do it all over again. And injuries down. People are like, well, you know, I got there's so many. I'm not an animal. Well, yeah, you are. You're a human being. So the note on the door is really, if you look at it, it's your awake time, you better be grinding. Your awake time, you better be grinding. Complaining, not doing the proper things. That during the awake time is when people, in a sense, should be doing things, implementing positive strategies. So sleep is the most imperative thing. And I have a rule. I have a rule. If you don't sleep, you don't come to the gym. So if someone wow. misses, yeah, if someone says, I got an hour of sleep last night, you're going home. I can't work with you at that point. I'll stretch you. I'll have you maybe take an ice bath. I'll do the Theragun on you, but I'm not going to touch the person because what happens if they're, they're dehydrated and I'm, I'm not knowing about it. And they just went out and, and uh, after the game, they party a little and they come to me, oh, I'm going to go an hour of sleep. I'm like, all right, let's start with squats. And all of a sudden they're dehydrated and we get a strain in the hamstring. Then what it is, two, three, four weeks he's out. I say, go home. Let's get hydrated and let's focus on sleep and recovery and get you prepared for your next day. So sleep is the most imperative thing. And here's the bad thing about this. People are put down for sleeping. There's a great book called Why We Sleep. And a lot of people don't know your sleep is embedded in your DNA. There's some people who wake up late and they're so productive and they got to start work at 10 or 11. You should find that out from your employees. You should also find that out about yourself. Because if you wake up at 8 o'clock and you're not ready to go at 10, then you have to find a creative role or a creative place of employment where you can express yourself and your talent so you're getting to sleep. Plus, two, if you deprive yourself of sleep, your immune system is, is suppressed. And if you think about this, missing sleep, like an hour or so, and, and cutting yourself and depriving, if you're going behind the wheel of a car, it's almost like being drunk. So staying up late and missing, you're fighting and fighting. We've all been there trying to get home, trying to get home, trying to get home. Depriving sleep, not getting an adequate amount of rest. You're decreasing your cognitive levels, which is your thinking, as well as your physicality levels. And less sleep means an increase in comfort food. The the hormone that suppresses your appetite goes out the door. The one that increases it says, let's go to Denny's. Okay, I'm going to get to food later in the interview. You convinced me on sleep. I want to go to bed right now. (laughs) (laughs) What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.